Good evening. My name is Aaron Gist, and I am here to share my local history project with you all. Uh, just a bit of background on myself. I have a, I'm a school teacher. I'm in my classroom now. I teach high school history, economics, pretty much every grade level associated with history in the high school. And been doing that for about the past 10 years now, and I really enjoy it. Um, what brought me into history was I worked as a civil engineer for several years, and I, around 2008, we had the housing bubble, and a lot of things changed in that profession, civil engineering. So instead of going back to school for that, I decided to go back for something that I truly enjoyed and loved, and that led me into history, which led me into teaching, um, which brings me here right now. One of the biggest topics um, that I study or my research interests are race and ethnicity, and the biggest one of those or I guess feel would be that of eugenics or the the whole ide ideology behind scientific racism. Uh, it's been known throughout throughout many countries and you know nations and languages um, for most of our modern history um, we've had that aspect of scientific racism and that's always been one of the things that I enjoy studying um, and it is one of the things that I wanted to focus on for this specific assignment um, for our public history um, in the state of well just so that everyone, I don't want to jump the gun and speak on a subject with someone, a viewer who may not be um, informed or knowledgeable about some of the things that I'm going to talk about. In the state of Georgia, in pretty much the United States altogether, um, during the 1920s, uh, even before, states began passing eugenics legislation. And what that means is uh, a state would come together, they pass laws that um, the state can legally sterilize or perform a vasectomy or other procedures on a individual as long as they were deemed um, unfit by the State Board of Eugenics. And that has been one of the areas that I've focused my research and I continue to focus my research. Before I move on, I want to elaborate and illustrate on how I plan on presenting my research to the public. As I stated before, I have a background in civil engineering and geography, and I'll be using ArcGIS story maps to present my research. I titled my project, the Georgia Eugenics Project, have a bit of information on it here. But the most interesting aspect of story maps is the mapping itself. We can go in and zoom in across the state and we could actually locate what sterilizations took place, when, and I've added documentation to each and I'm still, this is a work in progress. I am still updating these files and this map. So it's a work in progress. And there were thousands of sterilizations that took place across the state. And so it's going to take uh, a bit of time to get everything mapped out. But this is, I think, the best way to do it. I also have some data here about those sterilizations a little bit more information on the history of eugenics in the South and in Georgia. And I am going to be sharing a link to this website or this platform, this story map in the bio. Here in Georgia, we have 
the laws, Georgia was the last to enact or adopt this sterilization legislation. Uh, in 1937, the state legislature passed, you know, the state laws on eugenics. And I think that same year is when they actually began the, the state hospital at Milledgeville State Hospital actually began performing those procedures. Um, not a lot was known about the details of how those people were sterilized, how many were there, what ethnicity, what ages, what gender. So there were a lot of questions until in 2007, the Georgia archives in Morrill, Georgia, they actually released thousands of files um, related to the sterilizations that occur occurred here in Georgia. And amongst those thousands of files, it basically you have for an individual who was deemed unfit by the State Board of Eugenics, they would have three, three documents, three or more, Relate, but at least three relating to that individual and the process or procedure for their sterilization. So, for example, you have John Doe from Columbus, Georgia, and he, the state hospital determined that he was unfit to bear children. So there would be one document that went out that stated um you know, this is from the State Board of Eugenics. We approve or recommend sterilization against John Doe, and that would be the first document, the recommendation. Um, the next document are often correspondence from families. Um, the State Board of Eugenics, along with that original document that, that recommended sterilization, they also had correspondence that people could write to the state board and go to these meetings and basically lobby for their loved one to not have the procedure done. And that correspondence usually came in the, the form of handwritten letters, um, and that is from um, the victim's family to the State Board of Eugenics, not too many replies from the State Board to those family members that I've been able to find in the um, files as of yet. Um, and the next documentation, that third piece, would be the actual report of the procedure. Um, so for Mr. John Doe from Columbus, Georgia, who was recommended um, a sterilization because he was unfit. Um, that you have that original document, the recommendation. If his family did object, that document would be in the file. And the, like I said, the last file would be the report of operation, and that would be when you know the individual. It tells basically states what day, time, who the surgeon was, and what type of procedure sterilization procedure was performed. Um, so that has been very interesting to me and a, a personal project or something that I've worked on. Um, I've never stopped working on. Um, I really enjoy doing the work, discovering new information that I don't think has been published um, or even brought up in many of the histories um, dealing with the South and Georgia specifically. So I'm interested to go in and look at these files, dig, dig in these files and tell the stories of those Georgians who were involuntary, uh, involuntarily sterilized. Um, and this happened, this took place from 1937 to roughly about 1960, um, 1968 here in the state. So all of these thousands of individuals who were deemed unfit to have children, they all have stories. 
um, and some are more interesting than others. Some of the files are incomplete, um, which gives us more information on certain stories than we have on the others, but each of those numbers is a soul and an individual who was who was robbed of an opportunity by the state behind this scientific or quasi-scientific racism in the form of the eugenics movement or eugenics ideology. So I really enjoy going in and digging up, digging through those files, and I do believe that there should be a book published or more information, professional information, published on this um, this time of Georgia's history. It is important. Um, in 2012, the state legislature um, put out an acknowledgement to all Georgians stating that that Georgia legislature supports the education of the eugenics movement in the state so that so that we could foster a better understanding for human life and those are and those are the reasons why I have been searching and you know, digging in those archives for so long because I understand that there's a story, um, several stories that need to be told. And hopefully I can use my position um, to gain more skills with the archives and gain more skills with public history and in history in general, hopefully at the PhD level and to start sharing these stories with more people because I do think they are significant and they need to be heard and they need to be included in the history of Georgia, the history of South, of the South and the history of the United States together. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm Aaron Guest. Goodbye.